What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and today we've got a real quick welding project to do. Stick around. So here it is guys. So I recently built this and I'm calling this the ultimate grinder rack. But the one issue that I got to do is you can see how I've got all these cords kind of like slung over the top. And that's not the most convenient way uh, to store these cords. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rack off the wall and I want to put a little hook underneath so that these cords have something to hang on to. So it'd be rather than like that, it'll be kind of like up under like that. I think it'd just be more convenient. That way when you go to pull one of these off, you're not knocking the cord off for the grinder beside it. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Not a big project, but I'm going to talk to you a bunch of stuff as we go. I think the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just put a rough mark where each of these grinders is sitting and then I'll just come back and measure it out make sure that it's kind of consistent yeah next thing I gotta do is kind of like lay out all these things on this Clamp this thing down, that way we can keep it nice and solid, we can take our measurements, prep the surface. If you guys want to see how I built this fabrication table, I'll have a link up above and you guys can check it out. See, it's probably hard to see, you can't really see it because of the glare, but uh, I'm just going to transfer those marks onto the back of this. So, and then we'll just go like every six inches from there, I think, is what lays it out well. Six, yeah, 12, 18, 24, 30, and then that leaves three inches. So, yep, perfect. And you can see the lines that I've drawn on the back. Just so I know the areas where I got to clean up on the top of this grinder rack. All right, now I'm just going to clear a little area around this just so I got a nice place for the uh, weld to go. So I got six little spots right here that I need to make like a little hook for those cords. And I've got some small round dowel right here. And I think what I'm going to do is I've got a socket clamped into my vise. And I think what I'm going to do is clamp the round dowel to the side of the socket, then just bend it around it, and then cut it to length and see how that works. We'll just try it. I think it's going to work pretty good, but I don't know until I try it. So I think what I'm going to do maybe is just try to kind of keep this end a little bit beyond the socket just so I have a little bit of depth and clamp it in there just like that I guess oh yeah check that out guys that's gonna work out perfect so I just started it I went a little bit beyond this socket right here and just formed it around it and yeah that's going to work real slick. Measures about outside diameter to outside. Looks like almost one and three quarters. Outside to outside. So that'll give it a nice area in here for that cord to, to stack so you're not worrying about the cord spilling out. Now, a lot of this stuff, guys, is just an experiment. We don't really know how it's going to work until we try it. But, yeah, that's going to work good. Now we'll just cut it off. I just made a couple marks, held it up, saw what I thought looked good, and we'll just give it a try. This one will kind of be more like a, uh, a pattern to see how it looks, and then if it is good, we'll make a bunch of them just like this. Oh yeah, I think that's going to work perfect, guys. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's it right there. That's going to be it. Alright, so i got a minor, minor problem. And... Not a big deal, but 
Originally, I was going to weld these hooks like this right here, but the problem is, is that it's beyond the face. This hook is beyond the face of where the grinder is going to rest, and it's going to actually interfere with the grinder. So the grinder hooks on. This is upside down, obviously. The grinder hooks on like this, and this is actually going to end up hitting the grinder. So. I could do a couple things to fix that. I could reduce the diameter of this, which it's going to make it so that the cord has less space to be in, or I can move it back onto the back side of this because this actually has a space in behind it on the wall, and I'll show you here in a second, and that would cure it. So that still gives the nice thick radius for the cord to hang and it keeps it out of the way of the grinder. So I think that that's what we're gonna do. So we'll just have to grind the back of this now rather than, rather than weld them here. We're just gonna weld them here. And that's probably the better way of doing it anyways. So yeah, and I think that'll look really nice. So we're gonna continue forward. Setup is the same. We're just gonna put these in a different location on the frame, that's it. So you can see how that attaches here and then it hangs over so there's that little lip right here and that's where that hook will be coming around so I can do that here but if you guys are building this for yourself just know that that's going to be a problem you may have to uh, use a smaller radius like I said I'm using the sockets measuring about an inch and three quarters so if you went with a socket that was about an inch and a half if you guys were building this and the socket was a radius of an inch and a half, that would work. So then you could weld it to the bottom in case your wall, this set flat on the wall and it didn't sit like mine. So again, use an inch and a half socket for the outside measurement of the diameter of the socket to bend your radius. Uh, and this is eighth inch dowel that I'm using to do it. And then you could weld them right to the bottom and you'd have plenty of room. And so that I make all of my hooks the same, I've actually put a couple marks on the table. And I'll show you what I've done. So I line up this edge to this edge of the table. And I line up that edge to that edge of the table. And you can see I'll mark the hook here where that black line is. And then I'll mark it right here where that other black line is. So that all my hooks are the same length. And then I can just take them over to the saw and cut them. So we just got to build now uh, five more. Whenever I do these types of videos, guys, I always try to leave you guys with like some fabrication tips and some things that'll, uh, you know, like production tips, like that one I just told you about so marking your table so you can cut the right length. Uh, that's important, knowing these types of things and finding these little shortcuts because it makes things come out better and it makes you, you know, makes you quicker in the workshop to focus on other things. All right, there we go. We'll just bend her around. I'm keeping my hand nice and close to the socket so that it keeps the, the bend radius nice and tight. There, it's all flush. So I've got a mark there and a mark right there and then this hook once I cut it will be identical to the one I just made before it. Pretty slick huh? So there's the first one and here's the one that I just cut. And you see that's pretty darn close. Close enough for government work. I'll tell you what guys, this saw right here this that I built, I call it the ultimate portable bandsaw stand. I use this way more than I ever thought I would. Uh, go check out that video because if you guys have a bandsaw, I know I bought one thinking I was going to use it a lot more than I did as a regular bandsaw, it's set in the case. As soon as I bought my metal chop saw, I just stopped using the bandsaw altogether. I felt guilty that I had this nice bandsaw that I never used, and I but I couldn't think of a way. Why would I grab the bandsaw out of the case and 
use it to um, make these cuts when I have this nice metal chop saw. Well, the metal chop saw is nice, but it's kind of a pain to set up, and I don't leave it set up. So this I do, and this is super handy. This is great for like little quick cuts like this. You're cutting down a bolt, or even cutting angle iron. This works great, but um, this saw really shines for doing these types of cuts. So check out that video. If you have a band saw, it's really slick to have one of these. So I've transferred these marks now from here onto the back so I know where to grind down the metal for the back so we can weld those hooks on. And then I've got the marks over here underneath as a visual so I know exactly where they got to go. So we will grind that again. Uh, second time is always a charm so let's give it a whirl. And then those will go on guys just like that. That's going to work real good. Yeah. I should have done this to begin with, but hey, you know, like I said, a lot of this stuff, when I build it, I build it in my head, so I don't know until I actually start doing it. All right, and for this, guys, I'm using my Fronius Trans Steel 2200. This is a combination machine. It does MIG, TIG, and stick, and we're going to get it all set up. I love this machine. It's just so simple when you go from process to process, how easy uh, this machine works. For wire, I'm using 30 thousandths uh, Lincoln Electric wire. And we got to turn on our bottle, make sure we're standing off to the side. Turn that on. And then we just turn on the purge. And I'm running about 16 CFH of gas. Now, if you look at your flow meter, most of them will tell you where to read the ball. And as you can see, the two little arrows show on this flow meter style to read the ball in the center. So I set my CFH for about 16 and again you're reading right about in the middle of the ball so that's just about where you want to be right there. Some of them are different. Some you read from the top of the ball, some from the middle. So just know what you're looking at but I have found that 16 CFH is a real good setting. It's a good trade-off between uh, saving gas but still having good coverage gas. If you need a little bit more on your other end and your welds aren't looking good, maybe turn it up. But 16 CFH seems to be like a real good number. This one, uh, you can set it through either by amperage, material thickness, which that is. There would be amperage or your wire feed speed. So we're going to do it by thickness and you can set this machine up to either do by thousands or millimeters. So we're at uh, eighth inch metal, so that's 125 thousandths. Everything else it does on its own. Uh, I've got it set for 30 thousandths solid wire, solid steel wire, and I'm using C25 gas. So literally that is it. That's all there is to setting it up. The only other thing that you might need to change is if you were using self-shielded wire like flux core, all you do is you just swap these leads around. You'd have to swap this, you know, the earth, the ground, just swap the two around. All right, and I'm not going to get overly fancy with this as far as lining them up right now. I'm just going to get them on there. Then we'll worry about making them look real good once it comes time to fully weld them out. So we'll just get them stuck on. And again, so check this out, guys. I wouldn't say I necessarily have OCD, but it probably, I don't know, it's undiagnosed, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Um, so you see how I have this one that's silverish color, and then these other ones are black. And this silverish one is just slightly thinner. So I only had two of those because I ran out of this black stuff. So I've got the silver one here, and I'm going to put the other remaining silver one on this side so that it's like symmetrical so it's balanced so it'll be silver like black 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 silver um i don't know i'm gonna paint them anyway it's not that it matters but um i don't know stuff like that would just you drive me crazy i just i don't know i i gotta have kind of like things like even like that i couldn't have it be like silver black black silver black black it would just that would have drove me crazy and i think a lot of you from what i understand in the comment section a lot of you guys can relate to that so I'm not the only one. All right. Just 
sticking them on there. That's all I'm doing, guys. Just trying to get them fairly close. I'm just flushing the back up, stuffing them on. Then we'll line them up real good here in a minute. All of them look pretty straight, straight enough that it doesn't matter. I can weld them out. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fully weld them out right now. That's it. Now we just got to turn them over and straighten them out, make them look good. In case there's any ones that are tweaked. You guys, you can see a couple of them. I've got to kind of like tweak. Like this one right here. This one's way off. I've got to like tweak that one over a little bit. You know, 90 degrees wise, they're real good. But some of the hooks just need to be bent just a little bit just before we paint them. Straighten this one out a little bit. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah. That one looks good. Pull this one over a little bit. Good. That one's good. That one's gotta go that way a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. I think we're all set now. Check that out, guys. Yeah, I should have done that to begin with. But you know, hey, like I said, I'm I'm building a lot of this stuff that I build, I just build it in my head. I don't, you know, come up with a piece of paper and start jotting it down. <laughs> Maybe I should. Uh, but for the most part, I kind of just build stuff out of my head. So yeah, if you're building one of these, make sure you put some of these hooks on here. And like I said, these are just eighth inch diameter round rod. All right, let me go uh, paint it up. I've already wiped it down with some uh, mineral spirits, and now I'm just going to paint it. So while that paint is drying, guys, I am going to announce the winner of the Yes Welder Helmet Giveaway. And for those of you that aren't aware, uh, I've signed this helmet, and this is... A clear view, 180 degree panoramic uh, helmet. It's got tons of adjustments inside the headgear and it's got grind mode. Uh, this thing is a super nice helmet and I'm super excited to give this away to one lucky winner. So here it is. Here we go. The winner of this is going to be Jimmy Lee. So you have uh, a limited amount of time, Jimmy, to get a hold of me. And you need to email me at lunddiybuilds at gmail.com and just send me your address so I can get this shipped off to you. And congratulations. And there we are, guys. Now I can say with confidence that this is the ultimate grinder rack. This thing is super slick, super handy. Look how much cleaner that looks. So I got my big five inch grinder, a four and a half, four and a half. Uh, four and a half, a four and a four. So that way you've got your big grinder for doing big stuff. You've got one that's dedicated for just cutting, one just dedicated for wire wheel, one dedicated for just a flap disc. Then you've got a smaller one for some precision grinding and then another one for some precision grinding. So now when you go to get a grinder, you just lift it up, take the cord with you. And it's super easy. Come back, throw the cord on the hook, hang up the grinder. Done. You don't have to put it over the top like this and then worry about the cords getting hooked onto the other cords. It just super easy, stores out of the way nice and it just looks good. Yeah, this guys, in my opinion, is the ultimate grinder rack. And like I said, go check that original video and I'll show you all the tips and tricks on how to build this and how to build this for any size uh, grinder. I think each grinder bank, uh, bank of two takes up 12 inches, I think, but check out that video because I figured this out so you could make this however long you want from two feet to 20 feet. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. Pretty slick. And that's all there is to it guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. Be sure to check out my merch. And till next week guys, new videos every Friday and I will see you then. Like, comment, subscribe. See ya. Oh, and I want to say congratulations to the winner of the Yes Welder Clearview Panoramic Helmet. I appreciate everybody who participated. There'll be more giveaways, I promise you that. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, make sure you are. Hit that bell notification. Make sure you're subscribed so you get notified of all the events on this channel because the channel grows every single day, and it's all because of you guys. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, like, comment, subscribe. See ya. Come, come.